Thank you very much, Otto, for the opportunity, and thank you all for uh, attending here today and learn about a, a little bit more about a subject that is important to our uh, security in the Americas, something uh, a neighborhood that we share. Uh, it's a it's a great pleasure to tell you a little bit about the work that we've been doing at the American Enterprise Institute to document uh, Chavez's axis of hostility, uh, which he's constructing among uh, other countries that have in common virtually one thing, which is hostility to the United States and an intention to do us harm. Uh, and uh, both uh, in our advancing our values in the region or tending to our own internal security. Uh, and this is an extraordinarily important uh, development and one that we uh, need to understand uh, and hopefully press for a more effective uh, policy responding to the threat that's emerging there. The association with Russia, China, Iran, and Cuba uh, are the four pillars that hold up uh, the Venezuelan regime. They depend on him. Uh, for various things, on Chavez, that is to say, and, the, and, his, uh, and his oil money. Uh, the uh, Russians clearly want uh, uh, to have access into this hemisphere. Uh, they want access to the uh, billions of dollars that he's spending on his military buildup. The Chinese uh, have an interest in uh, a presence here in the Americas, as well as access to the uh, petroleum uh, and natural resources that Venezuela offers and the platform that he offers also into other countries in the Americas that share his, that are in sort of in his sphere of influence. Cuba, which offers Chavez an internal security capacity as well as the petrodollars. And, 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 and remember that Castro has uh, wanted his hands on uh, Venezuelan oil since the 50s, and he certainly has that. Uh, the Iranians, uh, which is a country I'm going to focus on mostly here, uh, are using Venezuela for various things uh, to uh, abet its development of an illicit uh, nuclear uh, military program, uh, and Chavez is playing an, an important role in that. Uh, I would say that the Venezuelan-Iranian relationship not, a, not only is a diplomatic and economic relationship, it's a criminal conspiracy, in as much as so many facets of that relationship are a violation of UN laws, and in certain cases, US laws. Um, the evasion of sanctions, the nuclear programs that uh, I think both countries are developing, including Venezuela, uh, the mining of uranium, uh, and the support uh, for terrorist groups that Chavez uh, has uh, 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 been carrying out, not only in the Americas in an infamous way, but uh, I will uh, suggest uh, within, with the Middle East as well. Talking a little bit about the sanctions of Asia, uh, Ambassador uh, Darren Bloom has already uh, given you some of the, the uh, data points there, uh, the development of joint ventures, the, the mushrooming of an economic relationship between Iran and Venezuela that was five years ago at zero commercial trade is now a $40 billion relationship, mostly Iranian uh, flows of money into Venezuela to support so-called joint ventures, commercial ventures, development projects, uh, and uh, into some uh, financial institutions uh, uh, that, it, that it then uses as a means to evade the international sanctions that are applied by the United Nations. Uh, for the express purpose of, of trying to deny Iran access to dollars, which it turns it uses in turn to support its uh, illicit nuclear program, uh, Sadarat Bank uh, owns a uh, uh, it's an Iranian bank that uh, has a presence in Venezuela. Has actually formed the Banco Internacional de Desarrollo, a Venezuelan institution that Ambassador Darren Bloom referred to. Uh, it's wholly owned by Iran's Sadarat Bank. Uh, and the Banco Internacional de Desarrollo not only functions as a means uh, to support these uh, ventures and launder money through these ventures in the Venezuelan economy and therefore access uh, the international financial system. Uh, it has been sanctioned explicitly by the European Union, which in July froze uh, all of the funds of this Venezuelan entity in, in Europe. The United States Treasury Department has also sanctioned that bank. 
uh, explicitly. Uh, in, in the case of the European Union, they referenced the, that bank, that Venezuelan institution, uh, as supporting the ballistic missile program, uh, as well as the illicit nuclear program uh, of Iran. Uh, and so this is uh, rather significant. It should be significant as well if that bank, that Venezuelan entity, is now looking to project its presence elsewhere in South America. Again, this is an illegal activity uh, completely. Um, second area, uh, the development of a nuclear program. Um, in November 2008, uh, Iran and Venezuela agreed, uh, signed in a memorandum of understanding which we have published on the internet. You can go to the AEI website and access this. Um, uh, to cooperate in science and technology cooperation, including in the field of nuclear technology. Now, this is an, an, an innocent, innocent enterprise. When we uh, publish this uh, uh, private, uh, this uh, secret document from within the Venezuelan and Iranian governments, it was to bring to light cooperation that is, again, a violation of UN uh, resolutions in that, are, that forbid countries in these internationally binding uh, resolutions from participating in the development of, a nu of nuclear uh, uh, technology with the state of Iran. Uh, we also published at that time a presentation <coughs> that within days of the signing of that MOU with Iran, they uh, made a presentation to the IAEA, the Venezuelan government did, uh, declaring it's uh, a, a nuclear energy program um, within days of that. Uh, now, when we brought this to light, Travis initially denied that he had a program, uh, an energy program or any other kind of program, and simply said on September 28th that we're <coughs> studying the idea of nuclear energy. Well, within uh, 10 days, uh, that famously efficient Venezuelan government uh, ended its studies and signed an agreement with the Russians to build a nuclear energy program. Now, none of us should be sanguine about the idea that our, fr our Russian friends are helping the Russians, uh, the Venezuelans develop nuclear energy uh, because they are, this is the same uh, smoke screen for the development of the Bushehr nuclear reactor which was used by the Iranians uh, and behind which they developed their own illicit program. Um, am I asserting that uh, Venezuela has intentions to, to have a military nuclear program? The answer to that question is yes. The same sources that produce the documents from within the regime, the same sources that have produced bits of uh, data, data and information that we've made public and that have supported our, uh, uh, our work, have also said that the, uh, the intention of the, of the nuclear cooperation with Iran is not an energy program. It is one with military applications very much at the core of those activities. Again, an illegal activity. The mining of uranium. The Canadian uh, uranium company, Canadian Expo uh, uranium exploration company, found in Venezuela, in Venezuela's Roraima Basin, in the western, uh, eastern part of Venezuela, a, a rich uranium basin that uh, that is uh, that rivals uh, the Athabasca region, which is the largest in the world. That's in that's in that's in Canada. In, in the middle of Roraima Basin, and we've published the contract also. <coughs> Uh, uh, where the, uh, the government of Venezuela gave a concession to the Iranian company Impasco, which is an entity of the, Venezuela, of the Iranian government, Impasco, uh, to mine gold in the middle of this uranium-rich basin. Incidentally, the only other place uh, that... Um, th uh, there's only one other place that the Impasco oper operates to uh, mine uh, gold or silver, and that's in Bolivia. This is the only place the Iranians mine, uh, supposedly, these precious metals. Uh, our suggestion is that if they, uh, if the Iranians have discovered gold in, in Venezuela, mazel tov. Uh, if they've discovered and are mining uranium, it's a violation of international law, and we should know about it and discover that, what's going on. Um, third, support for terrorism. The relationship with Hezbollah is well docu documented. Uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Darren Bloom referred to uh, officials sanctioned under U.S. law for involvement in, in this is officials of the Venezuelan government involved in support for uh, Hezbollah. One of those people is the, the, the number two uh, Venezuelan diplomat in Damascus. 
He's been a Venezuelan citizen for 10 years. He's now the second most senior official uh, in the Venezuelan embassy in Damascus. And Nazardine Abu Ali, named by the Treasury Department for support for Hezbollah. He manages the, those relations back in Venezuela. Uh, uh, and throughout Latin America, his relations with Hezbollah uh, were where they support these organizations. Uh, Frank Kopp, uh, uh, a German vessel intercepted by the Israelis carrying 500 tons of weapons, Katusha rockets, grenades, small arms ammunition, bound for Hezbollah. The last port that it left was Guanta. Some of the crates with these rockets bore Spanish lettering. So what we see is the Chinese, Iranians, uh, and, uh, and Russians selling weapons to Venezuela, where it becomes a distribution center to terrorist groups. So finally, what I want to do is talk very, very briefly about what we should be doing about this. All of this, we're talking about violations of law. And we have a unique opportunity to have bipartisan congressional oversight uh, into these issues because the Democrats on this committee, on the subcommittee that we hope uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mack will preside over, these Democrats share these concerns. And so we have an opportunity for a bipartisan, systematic oversight into these violations of UN resolutions, the mining of uranium, uh, the nuclear program, which are mentioned in UN Security Council 19, uh, Resolution 1929, the support for uh, uh, financial uh, access to the uh, financial system by the Iranian regime, named in UN Security Council 1803, uh, the support for international terrorism, all of this needs to be reviewed. Uh, by Congress. And, and the final hope is law enforcement. Applying uh, the, the FBI, this, the DEA, applying the rules of law against these, uh, this criminal organization. We can't count on American diplomacy, unfortunately, which, is, uh, which has decided to sit this threat out uh, and um, outsource uh, our, our security uh, to, to others. But we can hope that the American law enforcement is getting the intelligence that they need uh, to keep us safe. Thank you very much.